Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're talking about the sense of smell and taste. The sense of smell and taste go hand in hand. In fact, the better you can smell, the better you can taste, although it doesn't work the other way around. So we're, anyways, we're going to start with the sense of smell, and this is known as the olfactory senses. So one of our root words is the word olfact, which means to smell, and that's what we're doing. Let's look at this diagram here. What you're looking at in this section here, the looks like a bunch of squares, that's bone tissue. Uh, right above it is some nerve tissue, and below it is in the nasal cavity. Here we can see what's called the olfactory bulb. All the information that the nose is receiving is going to go up into the olfactory bulb, which goes to the olfactory nerve, into the brain. Uh, there we, at the bottom, on the nasal cavity side, are the olfactory receptor cells. And these are type of chemoreceptors. Uh, they can detect chemicals. We just discovered that a human can detect upwards of over 2,000 different types of chemicals. And depending on the uh, combination of those chemicals, we get a variety of different smells. Now, certainly there are things that we can't smell. Like, for instance, we can't smell natural gas. The reason being is because we don't have any receptor cells that can detect that chemical. Hence, it is odorless to us. So in order for us to be able to smell, a chemical must enter into the nose as a gas. And it has to be partially dissolved in a fluid to smell. So you may notice that on days when it is more humid, you have a better sense of smell because those chemicals are dissolved in more water vapor that's in the air. Those chemicals then are detected by the olfactory receptor cells. The chemicals attached to those cells, it creates a little stimulus that goes up to the olfactory bulb and then is sent to the brain via the olfactory nerve. And every olfactory receptor cell can detect a different type of smell or detects a different type of chemical. Now, the sense of smell is one of the most powerful senses that we have, especially in terms of memory. So you may, you may have heard about eating things like uh, peppermint. Peppermint has a very strong capacity to recall. So if you're studying and you are eating a peppermint and then you uh, take a test and you pop in a peppermint in your mouth, your brain has a better way of accessing the information that you stored in it while you are studying. Try it out. The other sense is the sense of taste. The sense of taste works hand in hand with the sense of smell. Of course, the receptors are found on the taste buds on the tongue. So here, if we on our diagram, we see a close-up view of the tongue. We can see the taste buds are just those real small, dark little spots that are on the papillae of the tongue. And a taste bud is made up of three things. There are taste cells, there are taste pores, and taste hairs. So here's a close-up view of a taste bud. Here's one taste bud right there. All right, so it's this uh, round structure that we see. And we can see the taste cells. Those are the yellow structures. There are the taste hairs. And these are the real tiny little structures at the end of the taste cells. This is what the chemicals are going to be attaching to. And then there are the taste pores, which are the opening to the, to the taste bud. Again, chemicals have to be dissolved in a watery fluid in order for taste cells to detect stimuli. This is one of the functions of saliva, is that it keeps our mouth moist so that we can taste. And the sense of smell also helps us taste our food. When we're eating or drinking, some of those molecules get changed into a gas, which go up into our nasal cavity, and it's the combination of our taste buds and our olfactory receptor cells that allow us to taste. So if you've ever noticed when you have a cold and your nasal cavity is filled up with mucus, that food tastes differently because you can't smell it while you're tasting it. And everybody can taste things differently. So for instance, there are some people that are known as super tasters, right? They, can, they have a heightened sense of taste, almost to the point where people that are very good at tasting, like for instance, wine tasters, if they were to take some wine, they could tell you a whole bunch of things. They could tell you the species of grape that was used to make that wine. They could tell you the uh, type of wood that the wine was aged in. Uh, they can even tell you the type of soil that the grapes were growing in. But then again, some of us have 
no sense of taste at all. And like I could go into my refrigerator and pull out some leftovers from five days ago and it tastes fine to me. So anyways, some of the five taste sensations. Well, we have sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and the newest taste sensation that has been added recently, umami. What we know in English as a Japanese term because they came up with it as savory. So for instance, something that's savory might be something like a, a nicely grilled steak that's just juicy enough and moist enough and... Oh, anyways, uh, that's what umami is. So the combination of smell and taste work closely together to give us those sensations. Uh, when we meet again, we'll, we'll be talking about the sense of hearing. That's hearing, I said. See you then.